Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, my name is Petar Kor Korponaic from uh, Quantastica. Quantastica is a quantum computing startup from Helsinki, Finland. I'm originally from Serbia. Uh, and uh, today we, we was, you, you are listening talks about quantum computing and now something refre refreshing, we will talk, I will talk about apples and oranges. <laughs> okay, that's a joke of course. So, uh, uh, I will talk about two things. Uh, first, uh, in first part, I will talk about uh, path from uh, quantum computing start uh, from open source project to quantum computing startup. That, that's my, my path. The, uh, the reason why I will talk about that is because this is open source conference and uh, most of you, I guess, uh, are programmers like me. Uh, and uh, the idea is to encourage you to, to, uh, uh, to start working in quantum computing space, uh, start contributing, start making your own projects, because it can lead to, to nice, uh, possibly, c uh, career. Uh, this is first part. In second part, I will talk about apples and oranges. Uh, in second part, I will talk about uh, connecting, uh, uh, running, the, running the, the code on different uh, types of uh, quantum computers, on different brands. Uh, for example, running uh, IBM code on Rigetti chip, or running Rigetti code on IBM chip, and etc. So, this is the plan. Let's, let's continue. So part one, uh, how it started. Uh, five years ago, I read somewhere a blog post about uh, quantum computing. It, that was 2014 or 2015, end of 2014. And uh, I didn't understand what quantum, what, what quantum computer, what is that? I, I never heard for quantum computer before. And I started reading. Uh, Wikipedia article was first, uh, I started learning and uh, I uh, found it very interesting. More than interesting, I was, I fall in love <laughs> with quantum computing, but I'm just a classical uh, software engineer. I'm not a scientist, I'm not mathematician, I'm not a physician, physicist, and uh, <clears throat> it was very hard, especially uh, then, uh, because now you can find uh, popular lit literature, uh, popular books uh, uh, about quantum computing uh, explained on more, uh, how to say, uh, on more uh, sim simplified, simply, simply <laughs> explained. Uh, in that time, it, uh, there, there, there was only say, uh, scientific papers. Oh, okay, there were, there were some books, but most of uh, lit uh, material you can find on the internet was uh, uh, scientific papers uh, written by scientists, uh, uh, Nobel Prize winners, and <laughs> when you read that paper it's, it's really hard. Uh, you need to uh, understand math behind and so uh, it was not easy but I, uh, the passion was strong and I <laughs> somehow I understood at least basics. I mean uh, it's uh, Hard to, hard to say, I understand. I, I know quantum computing because it's very uh, big and challenging field, but uh, I understand some basics, and then I started uh, coding. Uh, I, made my, I made first open source, uh, first project was a quantum circuit simulator uh, implemented in JavaScript. I made it in JavaScript because I simply want, want to run it on, in browser, uh, my mother language is C, my primary language is actually C, but uh, I was coding in, in JavaScript. Uh, it was public, uh, open, open source, and uh, after some time I realized that IBM is using my code, <laughs> they, they clo cloned my code. Uh, you can see it in Kis it's in included into Qiskit. Uh, there is Kiski JavaScript and there is a uh, line initially forked from my repository. So, uh, and that I, then I was really surprised that uh, big blue IBM is using my code. Uh, that was <laughs> unbelievable. And uh, that actually 
tells, uh, tells us that uh, quantum computing is a very, very uh, uh, young field. And when you contribute in, in quantum computing, you are one of the uh, few people in the world who is doing that. And you automatically can uh, make attraction of, of big companies. Uh, so my code is not uh, something magical. Uh, my code was maybe only open source JavaScript uh, simulator. And this is why IBM is, is uh, clone it. Now that project, their project is uh, actually uh, stopped. It's uh, archived. Recently they archived it, but my, my project is still, still alive. Uh, in the meantime, I was um, working on more projects like Quantum Programming Studio. Quantum Programming Studio is a web UI for uh, programming quantum, uh, for making uh, quantum circuits, something similar to IBM Q Composer. Uh, so drag and drop, you assemble circuit, and uh, you can run it uh, on two types of quantum computers. You can run it on Rigetti and IBM quantum computer directly fr from, from UI. And <clears throat> uh, Qubit Toaster, I, I name it Qubit Toaster, maybe <laughs> funny name. Uh, that's a simulator, high performance simulator written in C, in C language. And uh, I believe that we, we have uh, maybe uh, the fastest simulator in the world uh, on single node, on single machine, uh, and soon we will have a simulator running on, on a cluster on, and on supercomputers. Uh, so those are projects. And then uh, when uh, I started implementing uh, Quantum Programming Studio, uh, I applied for a uh, unitary fund microgrant program uh, Will Zeng, who is present here in the, in the audience, uh, he is running this project and uh, I, I, I won a, gr a grant. It was, uh, now it's uh, 4,000 uh, 4, euros, uh, gr a grant uh, of 4,000 euros. Uh, in that time it was 2,000 uh, in two parts. Uh, so you, you need to apply, you apply with your uh, open source project, uh, you send what is your idea and everything, and they decide uh, to uh, give you the grant or not. Uh, and uh, I, I suggest uh, to all of you, if you have some quantum computing project al already, uh, to apply for unitary fund because it, it works. <laughs> uh, and uh, this gave me actually uh, confidence, uh, self-confidence that I'm doing something, something valuable. And I continued and uh, launched, I launched Quantum Programming Studio in February 2019. Uh, Quantum Programming Studio now have uh, more than 800 users, which is not bad for quantum computing. Uh, if it is naked celebrity, we will have <laughs> 8 million users, but this is Quantum Programming Studio, so 800 users is not bad. Uh, <clears throat> then I uh, decided to, f uh, to make a startup. Uh, first, I, I made it in Estonia, uh, because I'm from Serbia, and it, it's, uh, Serbia is not the best place to work with quantum com uh, computing. Uh, so, and Estonia was easy because they have that... Uh, uh, electronic government, uh, and I have e-residency, e so I open company in Estonia. And later, uh, four, four months ago, actually, I uh, switched to Finland. Uh, in Finland, I have investor, so I, uh, but before that, to say that uh, quant uh, after uh, I founded a startup, uh, shortly, uh, I be uh, Quantastica became Rigetti uh, developer partner and uh, Quantum Programming Studio is listed in Rigetti uh, com uh, community uh, in Rigetti QCS as a partner application because uh, Quantum Programming Studio allows you to, to uh, visually design quantum circuit and to execute it on uh, Rigetti quantum computer. So you have UI for quantum computer. Uh, <clears throat> then I... Uh, uh, Investors started uh, 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 reaching to me, and I uh, found 
nice investor, Ice Baker, uh, from Finland, and uh, I sweet, actually moved my company to Finland. Uh, then I employed my code contributors. So, uh, because uh, the quantum circuit uh, project was open source, and still is open source, uh, my code contributors were first choice uh, to when I uh, when I was forming a team, and I will keep that uh, keep that so uh, contribute to our <laughs> our open source code, and it's possible that we will employ you. Uh, and today we have uh, quantum programming uh, studio, which is uh, IDE. Then we have language converters and drivers uh, for po popular quantum computing frameworks. And we have qubit toaster simulator. So this is our ecosystem. And today, because this is open source conference, I will talk about language converters and, uh, and uh, drivers. And here we go, apples and oranges. Uh, so what is the problem today? Uh, each brand of quantum computers has its own language uh, or framework or usually Python framework uh, for programming uh, their chips. Uh, IBM have Qiskit, and, uh, which is a Python uh, uh, framework. And they have uh, Chasm, which is quantum assembler. Then Google have Circ, uh, Microsoft uh, have Q-sharp, Rigetti have PyQuil, Py, uh, framework for Python, and uh, Quill, which is a uh, kind of assembler uh, for uh, low-level programming, uh, QPU. And uh, so what is the need? Users are familiar with their framework of preference. So. Uh, more uh, unlike other uh, disciplines uh, in quantum computing, your users are mostly scientists, uh, mathem mathematicians, physicians, etc. And they are not uh, programmers. Uh, they, they code, of course, but they are not really uh, that skilled. This is not their main skill. And uh, for us uh, programmers, uh, uh, the changing the framework is everyday routine. So there is millions of frameworks, and every day you need to learn new framework to implement something. And uh, it's not uh, for uh, uh, users of quantum computing. It's not that easy to switch framework. And uh, if they uh, know Qiskit, tomorrow you will hard <laughs> force them to use PyQuil or or vice versa. Uh, so uh, and uh, other. Uh, use case for uh, converting between quantum programming languages is uh, if you want to run and compare the same code on different chips or uh, different simulators, you need to uh, m manually write the code. Uh, and quantum cloud providers, uh, you, maybe you know that uh, IBM uh, al already have a quantum computer in the cloud, uh, Rigetti as well, they have a Rigetti quantum cloud service. Uh, Amazon is, uh, uh, soon we will have Amazon bracket, uh, Microsoft Azure quantum. Uh, so big players are, uh, will offer very, very soon, uh, more and more big players are offering a quantum computer in the cloud. And uh, those providers have uh, different chips connected to their uh, and offered in the, in the cloud. For example, Amazon is using Rigetti quantum computer as a, as a uh, provider for, for a chip. And uh, now question is how that uh, quantum cloud providers, uh, what, uh, which framework they will allow you to use. For example, Amazon, uh, when you tomorrow register uh, and uh, open your uh, quantum box. Uh, you have multiple uh, quantum computing chips connected. And what you will use to, to program that chips? Uh, if this is Rigetti, you need to use PyQuil. And, and what if you are familiar with Qiskit? So you need to switch to new new framework, which, which is uh, for quantum cloud providers, I think it's, it's the best if they offer 
to let users to choose whatever framework they want to use, uh, with no, ma no matter which chip is connected. And we have open source solutions for that, uh, where you can contribute, of course. So we have uh, in, uh, we have in uh, projects in JavaScript and in Python, both both JavaScript and Python. Why JavaScript? JavaScript is very unusual in quantum computing space. Uh, people mostly use Python, but why uh, JavaScript? Because it works in browser, and uh, if you have uh, you, you don't you don't have uh, you don't need to serve your your code uh, server side. You can uh, it executes uh, client side in a browser, and it's much more responsive. Uh, this is why we have both JavaScript and Python uh, projects. Uh, so this QConvert is a command line tool. Uh, there is also web UI and HTTP API written in JavaScript. Uh, there is a Quantastic, a QConvert. Uh, this is Python package. It's code converter for Python. And we have Quant Quantastic, a Qiskit forest. This is, uh, allows you to run Qiskit uh, code on Rigetti uh, quantum computer and simulator with, uh, with change, uh, by replacing only single line of your original Qiskit code. And uh, uh, forest backend, it's uh, currently in prototype. Uh, it's not public yet, and there is no name, official name, so I name it Forest Backend. Uh, it allows you to run PyQuill on IBM Quantum Computer and Simulator. And uh, so this is our Quantastica, Quantastica uh, GitHub. Those are uh, projects, uh, open source projects. Uh, this is connectivity. Uh, you can see that we uh, import, uh, we can import Q object. Q object is low level uh, uh, format, JSON, uh, which describes uh, quantum, si quantum circuit. And uh, this, uh, this is output from Qiskit, actually. And uh, that, uh, that code we import and convert into uh, all formats you, you see at the right side. Then we can import uh, Chasm, Quantum Assembler, and we import Quill. Quill is new, very new. Uh, Quill, pa Quill parser is very, very fresh from last week. I couldn't uh, look into Will Zeng's eyes without uh, implementing Quill uh, parser. So for <laughs> before FOSDEM, it was a deadline. Let's make Quill, pi Quill par parser. And it's very, uh, very useful to have because now we uh, can import code from, from uh, let's say, three formats. And uh, output uh, is uh, from our own. And yes, there is one more input, not <laughs> Uh, on, on, a, on a diagram is uh, uh, input from from our formats and I input from Quantum Pro Programming Studio drag and drop tool. Uh, and now, from from when you ha when we have it in our uh, internal format, we export it to to Chasm, and you can run it on IBM chip on, or simulator. We also export it uh, back to Q object. So. Uh, we intercept Qiskit, uh, from Qiskit uh, code, uh, it produces a Q object, we convert it uh, to other uh, format, and from other formats we convert it back to uh, Q object, which can be executed. Uh, export to Quill and PyQuill, and we support multiple ver versions of PyQuill. Uh, this is Rigetti, Rigetti formats. You, formats used by, used by Rigetti. Uh, then export to Google formats, uh, to Circ framework. Export to Quest. Quest is a simulator by Oxford. It's written in, uh, so the code is C++. Uh, it, so it converts to C++. And export to QSharp, Microsoft QSharp. Uh, we sh so code can run on Microsoft Quantum Development Kit. Uh, they don't have yet quantum computer, but soon they will have uh, Azure Quantum in the cloud. 
uh, export to Quirk. Quirk is a drag and drop tool, very handy. Uh, it runs up to 16 qubits, uh, so we can export into that format as well. And export to our own formats and export circuit dra drawing into, into vector or, uh, or bitmap formats. So this is connectivity diagram and <clears throat> this is uh, QConvert. Uh, this is command line tool uh, written in JavaScript. So you, you install it from NPM, NPM install QConvert. And you can see uh, the usage. I will, I, uh, so QConvert input file source format. It doesn't au automatically detect source format. So you need to tell this is Chasm or this is Quill. Uh, output file and destination format, and it can also generate the Jupyter notebook, which is handy. You don't need to copy paste, you can <laughs> directly uh, generate Jupyter notebook. Nothing more to, more to tell about QConvert. So there is a, a UI. Uh, I can show you live, de demonstrate how it works. So let's Q. Convert. So here you can type. You can type the code. In left side, you you choose a Chasm, Quill, or you can also import unitary unitary matrix. Uh, let's say Quill, and use for example C not two three. And. At the right side, it generates code. For example, let's show Q sharp. So at left side, you type Quill. At right side, you have uh, Microsoft Q sharp. Or you can have um, a drawing. For example, it automatically updates as you, as you type. And you can download. And of course, you can download uh, directly. Uh, you, you can download Jupyter Notebook. Okay, let's continue. Excuse me. Okay, so QConvert is uh, fresh, very fresh and very untested, but it works. <laughs> and uh, we accept pull requests. Uh, so this is usage, few lines. So from Quantastic, I import QConvert. Uh, and then you have converter. So you can use it as uh, you have source code in some variable. You, you, can, you can say QConvert convert uh, from which format you give it, you give it source, source code into which format and some options, and it you you get the text converted language, easy to use. And then there is a forest backend for uh, Qiskit. It allows you to run a Qiskit code on Rigetti quantum computer or simulator by replacing only a single line of code. Uh, so how you do it? Pip install Fantastic Qiskit Forest, uh, and from Fantastic uh, you, you import that package, and instead writing uh, this backend uh, air line, you type forest backend, get backend, and uh, your Qiskit code will execute on Rigetti uh, chip. Now my intention, I reserved a block. Uh, I reserve quantum computer, 15 minutes of, of quantum computer in Rigetti quantum cloud services. Let me see. Yes, so my, my reservation is active now, 5.54, yes, next few minutes, next 10 minutes. Problem is that something is not working. Uh, I think before, because uh, the connection, because the conne connection, uh, internet connection, some port is closed on, on, on router here. So uh, my intention was to run uh, Qiskit code on Rigetti real quantum computer in front of your eyes, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately that, that didn't uh, work. But I will, I will run on simulator. 
So I prepared, uh, let me see. Okay, so this is uh, Kiskit, uh, Jupyter Notebook, Kiskit from, from a popular uh, Kiskit textbook. This is uh, quantum approximate optimization for solving uh, max cut problem. And uh, I will simply, so this is original code and somewhere here is, so here is the, the code which executes, uh, executes this on, on uh, local simulator. Now I will run uh, entire notebook and we have some results here, okay. And now I will switch to, I will switch to Rigetti. So th this is Kis K IBM Qiskit code which executes on, on, on CASM simulator, ships with Qiskit. Now just comment that line, import our uh, forest backend and say in, instead this line, say this one. So forest backend get backend five qubit Q, QVM and run. And it executes and gives the same results. So, and it also works on, on real, on, 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 uh, on real quantum computer, not only on simulator, but uh, unfortunately I was not able to show you. Okay, let's continue. Uh, Yes, demonstration, that was demonstration. Uh, and that's all from me. Thank you for your attention. Uh, now that rotten tomatoes you, you prepared, <laughs> you can drop now. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. And if you have any questions, please, please ask, I'm ready to answer. So I have a question about uh, this Q converter. So when you transpile various ways of uh, writing down quantum computing algorithms, are they always compatible? So is it always easy or possible to turn one script into, into, into the other? Or are there cases when there are some errors because you cannot turn it? Or even worse, when something is almost like, but it's not exactly. I'm not sure that I understood the question. So can you please? So maybe, okay, so maybe other, in other way, in a Q converter, is it always possible to turn one script into the other? Or sometimes there are some instructions which are not supported by the other uh, language? Well, it, it converts a low level uh, quantum. Uh, so it, it, it doesn't convert entire Qiskit into PyQuil, for example, it converts only quantum circuit. Because in, in, in a quantum program, you have classical part and quantum part. Classical part is optimization and, and other things you, you normally do, classical program. And uh, the quantum part, the quantum circuit, which executes on simulator or on, on, on quantum computer, this is what we convert. So we don't convert entire, for example, entire Jupyter notebook in, into, into another uh, spice of PyQuil, of, of uh, Python, into another framework. We just convert low-level uh, quantum circuit. If this is, if that, that was the question. Uh, it's hard to convert, for example, we tried to parse Python and to convert uh, uh, Qiskit into PyQuil, but it doesn't, doesn't go well. Simply, you cannot do that because uh, the code uh, relies on other libraries and packages from, from Qiskit. So in that case, we will need to convert entire Qiskit into PyQuil. <laughs> I mean, it, do, it do, doesn't work. It, if that was your question. Okay. Coming up. Thank you. Uh -huh. 
since you have uh, such an overview of all the different frameworks, do you think uh, you can uh, comment if there if there's uh, already uh, like a framework you would prefer from the standpoint of, of formulating and then using the converter to, to get into the framework which is actually used by the, by the hardware or the, the implementation? Yes. Idea is that uh, users, of, for example, of quantum cloud or wh whatever you do uh, with quantum uh, computer or quantum simulator, even if you are ex experimenting at home, uh, to use your framework of, of preference with any, any chip. Thanks. Any other questions? If not, let's thank the speaker.